So I want to introduce you today to one of my favorite View 3 features, uh, and that's called Function Refs. Um, but before we talk about those, they are a subcategory of something called Template Refs. So let's explain what those are first, and then talk about Function Refs and when and why they're useful. So a Template Ref in View 3 is just a way of getting access to one of the elements in your template um, so that you can use it in your setup function. And kind of the normal idiomatic way to do this is, let's jump down to the script and take a look there. So we have, we import ref from the composition API, and we just set up a blank ref. We say const element equals ref. Um, you can put null in here. I think that's what the docs show, and that's what I've seen around other people's code. Um, but it's not 100% necessary. You can just leave that blank. Um, so this ref, since we're using script setup, this element variable becomes available to the template. And what I do here is in my div, I set the ref attribute to the string element. Um, and just with those two pieces together, the setting up the ref here and setting it as the ref attribute here, Vue will know that once this component is mounted, it should grab this div element and set it as the value of that ref. So that when I call on mounted, I can access element.value and I can be confident that this is gonna be that div. Um, so why would we want to do that? Uh, well, in this case, this is kind of a contrived case, but I am doing something here with the resize observer. So I've set up the resize observer so that I can move this element around and the width is going to get logged out basically in the inside the element there as its text content. Um, you can't do this from the view template. It'd be cool if you could do like at resize or something. Um, but as far as I know, you can't do that. You can only do the stuff with DOM elements like click or key down. Um, so for resize observers, intersection observers, stuff like that, we need to get access to this element in our setup function. Then down here, um, we can set up our observer. So ignore this piece for now. I'm going to touch on that in just a sec. Um, but let's look at what happens in the on mounted hook. Because remember, we can only access this div after the component has been mounted. So inside the on mounted hook, we are setting up our new resize observer. And the callback that we want to happen there is whenever the observer fires, it's going to give us a list of entries. Um, we're going to take the most recent entry and we're going to take the content rec dot width and we're going to set that as the value of text content on our div. Um, and then once we have that observer constructed, we say observer.value.observe, and we're going to pass in the element that we want to observe, which again is the value of this reactive reference here. Um, so why are we using this shallow ref thing? Well, when the component unmounts, we actually want to clean up this observer and get rid of it. We want to do observer.value.disconnect. Um, the browser is usually pretty good about garbage collecting this stuff for you, but it's always just best practice to clean up event listeners and observers and things like that uh, just to avoid memory leaks. So uh, my preferred way to do this is to set up a shallow ref, which is just like a non-reactive proxy object. Um, and then you can just update the value, mutate the value at any time. This doesn't trigger any other reactive uh, side effects or anything. You can't watch a shallow ref, you can't do anything like that. It's just a nice convenient place to store data. I could also just do something like let observer here and then I could just say observer equals and then uh, I could just access it that way. Um, but it's just my preference to have, you know, like things that are going to be around for the full life cycle of a component. I kind of like to have them stored as refs. So I just use shallow ref there. And then even though I'm creating it in scope here, I can store it outside and from the on before on mount hook, uh, I can access that and disconnect it. Okay, so that is the basic functionality. Um, and so let's look at what happens when we want to move this into a composition function so that we can reuse it in another place. So I've got a file set up here already. It's called use dimension. That's what we're going to call it. So um, let's move all these imports over um, and put them there. Oops. And we want to take all this code and just get it all out of our script setup and put it into our use dimension function. And then in here, we'll say um, import use dimension from use dimension. 
and then uh, we would do something, you know, just like use dimension, we would just call the function. This isn't going to work right now, um, and that is because we've kind of lost this connection here. Um, when we have this ref set to element, that's relying on the variable element being in scope of this function, and it's no longer in scope there, it's tucked away inside the use dimension function. Um, so if I save all this, uh, that should break everything. Yeah, we're no longer getting the width logged in here. That's totally broken. Um, so a few different solutions we could do here. I think the most obvious one, um, certainly the one that occurred to me first when I found this problem, and I think the one that most people reach for is instead of creating this ref in here, we just accept it as a parameter. We just say that's the element, and we just imagine that that is a, I'm not going to do all the type annotations, but we imagine that that's a reactive reference to an HTML element. Um, and then out here, we would then import ref from view again, and we would say const element equals uh, just a blank ref and then pass it in here and that should get us working again yes we're all set um, so a few things I don't like about this one it makes the developer who's using my function it, it forces this additional step on them it makes them set up the ref first before they use my function um, so it's a little bit of extra work and of course they always have to attach that here uh, the other thing that I don't like is just the way that it clutters up the parameters of this function. Like you can imagine we would do something like add a dimension option here, which is a string. And we could just say like arbitrarily any property. And maybe we default that to width um, so that the function still works just like normal. But we could customize that to say, I actually want to log out the height. And now we're getting the height instead of the width. Um, so you can see that we've got this, like we've, you know, we've got a, we've got some required parameters, some optional, and with more complex functions, of course, this would get even more complicated. Um, you can always cram this stuff into different objects, and you know, so that you don't actually have to remember the order of everything. But still, um, it's just kind of messy to have all this stuff and have a mixture of required and optional stuff. It's just difficult to remember and difficult to work with when you are using someone else's composition function for the first time. So ideally, we just have use dimension and have the dimension option there so we can customize that. Um, and then we would get rid of this. And then, of course, we're back to the same problem, which is, you know, we don't have access to this anymore. So this is where function refs come into play. And before I show you how that solves this problem, um, let's just look at uh, what a function ref is and how it actually works. So what we can do here is we can define one. We're just going to say um, function ref equals L and then uh, so we need to do something. So a function ref is just a function that accepts only an element as its only argument and then it stores that element um, in some reactive reference. So we can say const element equals ref function ref equals element dot value equals L. And then what we do with this, instead of bind, instead of passing the string as this ref, we can actually bind our function to it. Um, and I'll even actually log this out so that we can see more clearly that it's working. Um, so we've got the function ref set up there. This actually should, no, maybe we're not working there. Um, Oh yeah, because we don't have access to it here. So let's get rid of the use dimension stuff for now and let's just focus on this console logging. So I'm gonna click over to this tab where we have the um, the page open here and the, and the console open. So you can see already we're getting this logged out. So clearly our function ref has been called, which is cool because it, it proves that this works. We bind the function to the ref attribute. Um, you can't do it like this. You have to actually have it bound because uh, you're passing in a function and not just a plain string. And um, then you can do whatever you want with that element. Um, what you would normally do is you would just store it in a reactive reference. So now what we can do is we can take this code, um, uncomment these things, and move this in here. And we can say, um, we can assume now that this is all working. Uh, we'll get rid of this log, and we can return 
the function ref. And now we can say const function ref equals use dimension, and that all now should be working. Let's see. Um, yes, yes. Have all that done. Maybe if I reload the page here. Yes, okay, so we're good. So we're logging in, yeah, because we've customized it to use height. The height is now being logged. Um, so this really is a super cool pattern. This idea of creating reactive references um, and just kind of trusting that that element will be there when you need it on the mounted hook and then returning a function ref so that somebody can use it and bind it. Um, so let's just, we would maybe just call this element to um, keep that simpler or something. And maybe this would be the idiomatic way that we tell people to use our composition function. And now they can, of course, customize this if they want to use width instead of height. And all of that works. And we've got a really cool, interesting, smooth API here. So we just call the function, get a function ref back, bind it where it needs to go. It's just those two steps um, and everything else works. And you can do really incredible things with this pattern. You can set up... Um, all kinds of area attribute binding and custom event listeners and stuff because now that you have access to this element inside your composition function um, you can use all the familiar web apis dom apis anything you want um, you know as long as you're calling it in the right lifecycle hooks and you're cleaning things up properly and you're timing your effects properly uh, you can abstract really tons of different functionality into just nicely packaged little composition functions with clean um, optional arguments and um, just make everything work really smoothly and it's, it's a great developer experience when you're using this stuff um, and it's a really fun authoring experience as well to kind of have that power and in a lot of ways return to um, sort of like basic back to the basics JavaScript um, where you're interacting with the same tools that you've always used um, using view reactivity and view patterns when you need them when they support your work and otherwise just kind of writing freeform JavaScript and doing whatever you need to do. So um, super fun feature. Function refs are awesome. Uh, I'm going to make another video where we talk about how to use this with lists of items, uh, things that are rendered by a v4, because that's really, I think, what Vue intends function refs to be used for, and that's kind of what they've documented as well. So we're going to look at that and how that works, but we'll do that in another video. Uh, and so I'll catch you in the next one.